In this week's Pass the FE Exam video, I have with me Chris Sibchek. He is a project engineer at Collier's Engineering Design, and he failed the first two attempts at his FE exam. So in this episode, he's gonna talk about how on his third try, he passed. What did he do differently? How did he build accountability into the process? I'm excited to share that with you now. This week's video is brought to you by PPI, a leader in engineering exam prep since 1975. PPI provides expert prep courses and study resources designed to help you pass the FE exam the first time. PPI's live online courses include hours of lectures, problem solving demonstrations, exam strategy sessions, office hours, and a passing guarantee. When you take a live online course, PPI guarantees you will pass or you can take the on-demand course for free. With study guides, practice exams, and more, the PPI Learning Hub offers digital practice and review that you can take with you anywhere you have a device so that you can prepare during the times most convenient for you. Check out PPI today at ppi2pass.com to see all the options available for FE exam prep. Let's dive in. All right, now I'd like to welcome on my guest for today, Chris Sivchek, a project engineer at Collier's Engineering and Design. Chris, welcome to Pass the FE Exam. Hi, nice to be here. Thank you. So Chris, tell us a little bit about your educational background and what field of engineering you practice. Yeah, sure. So I went to NGIT, uh, New Jersey Institute of Technology in Newark, New Jersey. Um, growing up, I always loved physics and math and hated writing. So engineering was pretty much where I, where I picked up. And um, basically, we do a lot of traffic engineering at Collier's. Like you said, I'm a project engineer. So I've been drafting pretty much for the last couple of years, but now we're transitioning to more of like a review uh, project management situation, which is really cool. That's great. And Collier's is a great firm. They've been one of our sponsors across our content and they are growing fast and they've got a lot of great opportunities for engineering professionals. So Chris, talk about taking the FE exam. How many times did you have to take it and what kind of made the difference in finally passing the exam for you? Yeah. So I, I took the stressful path. Uh, I've taken it three times, passed it on the third time. Um, stressful being I, I took it senior year during finals, barely studied. I was thinking that I would be able to open the review book, uh, study for a couple of days, go into the exam, take it, pass it, call it a day. Everyone was saying it was, it was rather easy. It was pretty much what we learned in school. Uh, which pretty much is not the case. I mean, there's a bunch of different sections and stuff that are on the exam that we learn, but there's a bunch that more like you have to do a lot of review um, a little outside of your typical classroom setup. But 2017 is, is I did not pass at all. It wasn't even close. And then following graduation, I started at Mazer and I started at Collier's. Um, they gave me a push to to start studying again and to to take it. So in 2018, I took it again. I studied pretty hard. I didn't do any review courses. I just did my own thing, um, and I failed, but I missed it by a few questions. When you do fail, they give you this little recap of um, what you did well or what you could have did better, um, and what section specifically. So I took that and pretty pretty much got in my own head and I was thinking maybe I'll just wait a couple more more years to uh, to take it and to to prolong it um, every day living at home you know you hear from your parents take your test take your test so my mom bugged me for so many years and it was stressful because it's in the back of your head like knowing you have to take this exam you have no motivation to do it but um, you have to get it done to, for your career. So eventually, pre-COVID, I started studying in, let's say, I think January, I took a review course, um, but I did the on-demand section of it. So I only, I got pre-recorded uh, stuff, but it didn't give me really like organizational that I needed. So like I took it maybe 
right after work I'd fall asleep watching the video because I never had like never had to be there never had to participate give attendance so like it really wasn't great for me but my test was March 23rd or whatever it was and COVID shut down like the week before so the two months that I studied really didn't really didn't a lot to anything because I couldn't take the test so then again you know you're sitting at home prolonging this test so eventually uh during my manager meetings they were like you know chris this is this is your time you you have to take advantage we're growing so fast so rapidly like you have to take it by the horns and, and just and just do it so that's what i did um i decided to take a review course fully um live and it was pretty pretty organizational it was four days a week three hours um, lots of study in between. They gave you practice problems to do prior to the next class. Um, so ultimately, that to me is why I passed the exam the third time. That's great. Wow. What a, what a journey that is. And just for those of you not familiar, um, the company Mazer Consulting was acquired by Colliers, which is why Chris mentioned them and started at Mazer and then they were acquired. And of course, we said Colliers is really fast growing, but <clears throat> really good takeaways from what Chris said there is that even if you take a review course, again, every person's different. So for some, some of you, the on-demand might work for some of you, you know, maybe you need the live instruction, but it sounded like for Chris, what was key was the live instruction because it kept them engaged, kept them focused, kept them following along and organized, which is what I really feel is a benefit to the, um, the review courses <clears throat> to give you structure. When you are practicing as an engineer, there's a lot of stuff going on at work. There's a lot of other stuff going on in life. And somehow you got to fit in studying for an FE exam or even a PE exam later on. And the review course helps to keep you focused like anything else. We need accountability. That's a huge thing. And Chris also kind of hinted at accountability just from hearing from all the different people in his life, whether it was his mom or his managers or you know people at work that were kind of pushing him, which is great that they did because from my experience, the further out of school that you wait to take this FE exam, the harder it gets. Literally, every day it gets harder and harder because you're further removed from when you actually learned those different concepts. So I think that's an important, hopefully, takeaway for you. So Chris, talk about how your company kind of supported you through this process. I know some companies support their professionals more than others, but it sounded like you had support. Yeah. So just to start off by that, my managers were always very easygoing and the you know, they never said, Chris, you're never going to get promoted because you don't have it. But they pushed me to a position where it was uh, in my best interest, which was the best, the best awesome that they did. They really motivated me to to get it done. Um, what Collier's does that I'm, I hope other companies do, I'm not really sure. They have this professional development initiative that basically what they do is if you have a training course, they pay for it. If if you have any uh, test materials that you need for this, they pay for it. Um, the day of the exam, they don't make you use PTO. Uh, they have like a special task that you build to and pretty much lets you uh, uh, take the exam without having to use PTO, which to me is amazing. Um, so they really have a, a big push for professional development and like they don't just speak it. They like, they prove to you and the, uh, and the employee that they they have that strong desire to help you. That's great. And I think that's really important in the world we live in today. For those of you out there listening, getting career growth and development support from your company is very important. It's not something that every company does. The things that Chris are describing is not everywhere and automatic. So it's kind of another thing that you should talk to companies about and inquire about when you are going through the interviewing process or your current company. Maybe you don't know if they support you for your PE license or other certifications, uh, the FE you know, that you want to pursue. And so it's great that Chris had that support, both you know, support from you know, his managers kind of giving him confidence, but also some financial support and other support around it. And you know, getting that day to take the exam and not having to charge personal time is really valuable. It is not just valuable in the sense that you're getting a day, but you know, it's no stress, low stress on, Hey, I got to take a day off to do this, you know, and, and really it's smart by Collier's quite frankly, because you want to help your employees grow. <clears throat> I mean, ideally you help them grow, you grow. So that's great to hear that from Chris. Cause it's not, it is not automatic. So I just want to make everyone clear on that. that you should really 
look into that. So Chris, one of the other questions I like to la- ask those that pass the exam and come on and share some tips with us is what did your study schedule look like? I mean, you took it at the point when you were practicing as an engineer, you know, in a busy consulting job. So talk to us about your schedule. Yeah, I would say it was very stressful. Um, working as much as you can, you know, you're young, you have uh, lots of hours to provide. So I was working like 45 hours a week and still uh, taking this review course three hours, uh, three hours a day for four days a week. So for me, like I had to shut down pretty much on my social life just to, to fully engage myself into studying and, and I would be studying on the weekends, even some, some weekends I'd be working. So like, it was hard to, to multitask on both, but you know, one overweight the other. So eventually I was, I had, had a chat with my my manager saying you know I have to take a, a maybe I'll only be able to do my 40 hours this week like I really want to study for this section or whatever um, and they were definitely cool with it they they appreciated the the communication um, I will say that I decided to schedule my my FE exam further out so that I had it in the back of my mind that you know like you have to study X amount of hours today and this weekend, this week, just to get you to a point where like that is going to be when, when you're taking the exam, you pay $50 to reschedule the exam. That doesn't make sense. So you're going to take it this day. And to me, that really motivated me to, to continuously study. And even though like you're tired after work, like that's probably the hardest part, uh, getting to sit down in the chair and, and, just realizing that you worked so hard during the day, but you have to focus to study. Um, so that's definitely, I think, the hardest part while you're while you're working. So, like the best thing for somebody in college or right out of college, take this before uh, you get a chance to start working. You know, maybe say to your employer, "I'm, I'm going to start a month later because I'm going to take my FE," or even take it in, in college when you can study more often. You get free time in, in college. Yeah, that's a good point. And, you know, I think what you're hearing from Chris here is that regardless of when you take the exam, you, you need to build accountability factors in. He signed up for the exam. He had that end date in mind that he could work backwards. He signed up for the live instruction course, review course, which obviously pretty much was a big part of Chris's study schedule. He attended the live sessions. He knew when they were going to be. I'm sure they were on his calendar and that was really his study schedule. So doing things like that can really build in accountability for you. And really at the end of the day, after your live review course or your review course, then really whenever else you're going to get the chance to study, you're going to obviously study. For me, I did try to get some calendar time. I think I studied like early in the mornings, like before work, some days I I would do it and I would put it on my calendar. Um, You know, whatever you can do again to just make sure that you're staying focused and you're staying on target. But I do believe that a review course help is helpful. And also Chris's point about having a conversation with your manager is also very helpful because listen, at the end of the day, like I said before, your manager and your company should want you to succeed and be successful in passing this exam, which means they're most likely going to work with you to give you that time that you need to study. So just having those conversations, I think could be very valuable and don't, don't shy away from that. All right, Chris, last question for you. Are there any other tips that you want to share with listeners that maybe helped you in your pursuit of of passing the FE exam? Yeah, so thinking about the exam, understanding the the method that how you have to take it. So they give you like a whiteboard, they give you like a pen. Uh, You're not allowed to erase. I I don't know how strict they are about erasing, but um, that's all they give you. So to me, going into practice problems, that's what I did. I used a pen, I used a paper. I knew I wouldn't be able to to erase anything. So I scratched off. And really, I think that like helped me um, like trying to work faster, trying to to make sure my penmanship worked with a, with a pen instead of a paper or instead of a pencil. So to me, I think that's a big factor I think people should uh, try to do while studying. Another one is understanding what the three minutes is. They say like three minutes for per question, four minutes per question, whatever it actually is. But like understanding like how long it takes to read the problem, where in the reference book uh, you have to go. And that could be already a minute. So like just understanding how long every question they say should take and and mapping that out for yourself in your mind could definitely do do wonders for you during the exam. I definitely 
remember sitting there like understanding the question and then I was like wow I, I wasted like three minutes so I skipped it and then uh just kept going through and if you're wasting too much time it's not good for you towards the end you're going to be guessing so speed and understanding time through these exams is crucial critical awesome all right so there you have it chris sivchek from collier's engineering design chris thanks so much for spending some time with us on past the fe exam of course yeah thanks for having me and i love this show so i, I watch a bunch of the others and i think they're bene very beneficial for the test taker Thanks, Chris. I hope you found this week's video helpful and upcoming videos will answer some more of your FE exam questions and run through some more practice problems. Past the FE exam will publish videos weekly, so please be sure to click the subscribe button as you'll get expert tips and trips, including practice problem solutions weekly to ensure you pass the FE exam. We'll see you next week on Pass the FE exam.